So I, I turn to our good friend, St. Paul the Apostle's writings yet again. Um, and spoiler alert, we will be doing that again tomorrow. Because Paul's a unifier. Just funny, most people think of Paul as stubborn, belligerent, maybe a little pompous. Mm, can we use some divisiveness? And actually, that's probably all true, but he's also a unifier, believe it or not, and sometimes because of those things. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of division in the church. People believe lots of different things. They come from different cultures, different experiences, different parts of the world. Um, they have different feelings of what the church should be doing, what God should be doing, how we feel about the Roman Empire, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of different strong thoughts and perspectives, religious backgrounds before becoming Christian. And Paul it just constantly to make clear over and over again, being united in Christ is more important than all of that. And so here we are, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It starts with his customary greeting salutations. And we get to verse 10. The section is called Divisions in the Church. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, that there are no divisions be among you. Okay, well, that's impossible, but continuing on. But be united in the same mind, same purpose. So he's being a little flip, but, uh, and he continues, it's been reported there's been divisions, but this idea that we're called to be united. We're called to the same mind and purpose, the, the gospel mission of Jesus Christ. I love that when people are like, oh, well, this congregation, you know, we have... Some people on this side of the aisle, some people on this side, and we, oh, we have some people that, um, you know, we have a lot of churches, we have our, our early service people and our late service people, and they don't really interact. Why are we okay with that? We should have different people, I'm not saying we shouldn't have different people, but they shouldn't be separated, right? The coffee hour shouldn't be the same people sitting next to each other once we get back in person. Uh, we shouldn't have separate services where we don't really interact with each other. We shouldn't have um, different group, the age groups, right? Sometimes congregations we can have um, a more venerable generation group, a youth group, a young parents group, which is good to have those spaces um, for certain dialogues, but that shouldn't be the only groups. We should be united. Those groups should have the purpose of, of serving the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we, we forget that part. We need to start, stop at the first part, the comfortable part. I'm with people that are like me. And then we get into spats about the color of the carpet or uh, what council should do with the benevolence money or, or whatever um, based on our, our, our tribes and silos that have formed in the congregation. Why are we okay with that the way it should be? That's not what God says. That's not what Paul writes here in the church. The expectation is unity. The expectation is a reconciliation of differences for the greater good of having those difficult conversations, of getting to know one another, even if you don't have anything in common. Because we have one thing in common as Christians. Our faith! I mean, that faith looks different. We still have that same faith. We still have that foundation for our lives that is the same, and that matters. It matters. And Paul talks about the... Um, in this section of, of verse 12 here, people are talking about, well, I belong to Paul because Paul baptized me. Well, Cephas, Peter baptized me. Um, so, you know, we're, we're different sects of this church. And Paul's like, no, 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 no. I didn't baptize you. Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? No. Verse 14, I thank God that I was baptized. None of you said, Christians and guys, uh, so knowing as you're baptized in my name, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel. Not without wisdom, but so that a, the cross of Jesus Christ may not be emptied of its power. God does this work. God brings us to the faith. Not ourselves, not our pastors, not our, our, our teams. God did this. And by giving that up to God, I think some of our conflicts will disappear. Real quick, a story here. Um, it, one of the congregations I belonged to in my youth, uh, before seminary, long before seminary, um, there broke out a large, 
it's funny. The littlest it seemed the church seemed so united. It really did. Um, lots of going, lots going on. Healthy membership. Um, you know, met the budgetary goals. All all the check boxes you could imagine. Everything's going great here. Two pastors, uh, youth team. Oh, it's just oh, so wonderful. And then there was a discussion about fellowship. That we had to, we had had some water damage, and the carpet had to be replaced, and it had affected the counter where where the coffee and the donuts um, always were, and it had to be replaced. This presented an opportunity, but it was interesting. This this church that was so on target that had everything going right really hit a snag over this. Well, what if we just rebuilt it the same way it was? Well, this is our opportunity to have something better. So we can offer more than just coffee and donuts. Donuts are unhealthy. Oh, but so-and-so loves the donuts. He's been bringing the donuts for 30 years. Right? Then all of a sudden, all these differences started to come out of the woodwork. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going to use the same ugly carpet color, right? I hate that carpet color. we got to go with this nice burgundy. Oh, no, that's too expensive. We can't afford that. we got to save money for something else. Right? All, the, all of a sudden, poof, it fractured this congregation over carpet and in a buffet table. And coffee and donuts, things that don't really matter that much to the gospel mission of Christ, and it brought us down. People left the congregation over this. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Was that a true unity? Was that a unity founded in Christ? Or was it unity at something else at play? Other factions in the congregation. So unity in Christ, we have power, and that would have been solved very quickly. You need something else, we lose our way. Now, I was too young then, but I, I hope, I really hope now, um, I would encourage some conversation of why we are so attached to our point of views on that one. Where could we um, meet each other in the middle and remember we're baptized in Christ. The donuts didn't die on the cross for us. The carpet color doesn't um, bless us and, and, and help us in our daily life. <laughs> and so I've gone on way too long today, but uh, I, I hope that you hear that it's God that brings about unity. Yes, it's work. Yes, we need to be active in it. But I think if we have Christ as our focus, a lot of the little things that we argue about, and maybe not as funny sounding as donuts and coffee, but there are other issues that we argue about, they don't seem that big anymore. We'll attempt to wrap it up tomorrow.